But it's time now for Focus, and today we have a report from Egypt, six years after the outbreak of the revolution which swept Hosni Mubarak from power. As protesters took to the streets across the country, they called for bread, freedom and social justice. But now Egypt has another strong man, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who has said that stability is more important than freedom. He's overseen a harsh crackdown on dissent. This is unemployment remains high, inflation soaring. From Cairo, Sharif Abdel Kudos reports. Millions took to the streets six years ago demanding bread, freedom and social justice. The clarion call of the revolution, a slogan that resonated throughout the country. But six years later, have those demands of bread, freedom and social justice been met? With little income, Ahmed can only afford to go to the market once a week. A house painter, he's finding jobs harder and harder to come by. But thanks to a new card system, he still has access to subsidized bread. 20 loaves for the euro equivalent of five centimes. Yet his family is still just scraping by. They only get one meal a day. For bread, thanks to our cards, things are now easier. We don't have enough money to buy vegetables every day. The price of commodities has doubled, sometimes even tripled. This month, Ahmed and his family earned a total of just 20 euros. Six years after the revolution, Egypt's poorest feel that their lives have not improved. I'm angry because of the situation. I'm angry at the government and people who are responsible for raising prices for poor people like us. I'm upset because things have become so expensive. Yet these families do not think to protest. Their chief concern is to better their daily lives, which have only become increasingly difficult. As for the freedom that was so vigorously demanded for six years ago, that too has regressed. The security crackdown is everywhere. The photojournalist Shao Khan has been in prison for nearly three and a half years. His trial is repeatedly postponed. He faces the death penalty. His mistake? Having photographed a political demonstration that was brutally dispersed by security forces. His friend, Ahmad Abdel Gawed, covers all the trial sessions. He's convinced that in Egypt today, any photographer can suffer the same fate as Shao Khan. What happened to him is unfair. And all of us, our generation of photographers, we all share and experience this injustice. Nowadays, just taking a picture in the street makes you really anxious. You stay for the minimum time necessary and afterwards you run away because you know that every time something can happen. The police will bother you, arrest you or question you. Even ordinary people are now using the same cautious strategies as we photojournalists do. Political figures, journalists, civil society workers, tens of thousands of opponents are now behind bars. For the past two years, a photography competition has been organized in honor of Shao Ken. The brother of the imprisoned photographer came to the award ceremony with a message. When I saw Shao Ken in his last hearing last Monday, he asked me to tell you three things. The first is to continue your work. Second, don't be afraid. And the third is, don't forget that it's you who transmits the truth. This year, Ahmed was one of the winners of the contest. Despite the repression, he wants to continue practicing his profession for the sake of future generations. Photography of everyday life is important, especially for history. One day when people will want to know what Egypt looked like in 2016, for example, they will just have to look at the photos from that time. When considering social justice in Egypt today, the lofty goals of 2011 are but a faded memory. Mina knows this all too well. After he graduated from business school, he found no job that would provide him with a living wage. He refused to join the ranks of thousands of unemployed university graduates. Instead, he set up a small business with his sister, Gina, selling baked goods on the street. For her, the whole system is corrupt. It's not easy to find a job now. And I don't want any. You have to know someone to give you the job or something like this. They can, you buy your own, it's up. Like much of the middle class today, Mina and Gina feel completely suffocated. I was in the middle class. I think now I start to downgrade. 
but hopefully after the, this project and if it is uh, it, it get more expand so it will make me again in the in the mid level again the official unemployment rate stands at 13% amongst the youth the rate is at least double that today the generation of tahrir no longer nurtures the same hopes they did 6 years ago as they struggle through an increasingly difficult life they often dream of leaving this country where they see little hope for the future.